So I'm Lucy, I'm Porton Museum's project manager for the diving into the digital archives of the Earl of Abergavenny. I wish that wasn't such a long name, the title for the project. But um, I've got an, a, a background across the arts and heritage sector of around 10, 12 years. So I've worked in different, different capacities from museum administrator and project manager to artist and volunteer coordinator. What I'm going to do for the next 10 minutes is give you a very brief background into the story of the Earl of Abergavenny, the digital archive that was created at the time of its excavation, the excavation of the ship, and then the current archive that's being created now um, by our volunteers at Portman Museum as part of this project. So, the Earl of Abergavenny was a British East Indiaman on a trading mission from England to Bengal and China. Sadly, it sank with a loss of around 250 lives in 1805, just off the coast of Portland. So that's partly where our connection is there. It was captained by uh, John Wordsworth, who was the brother of the romantic poet William Wordsworth. So it was a big story of the day and is still a story now for, for many scholars and experts on, on William Wordsworth's poetry. So... Over a period of around 30 years, uh, a team of amateur maritime archaeologists surveyed, excavated and recorded the finds from the Earl of Abergavenny. They were led by Ed Cumming, who was uh, local to Weymouth at the time of the excavation and sadly died a couple of years ago. Since Ed's death, the collection from the Earl of Abergavenny shipwreck has come into Portman Museum and we have an extra connection with the shipwreck collection which is that one of our trustees was also a member of the diving team that excavated the ship. So they're, they're, that's kind of Portman Museum's uh, uh, connection with the Earl of Abergavenny. So since Yes, yeah, since that excavation, we've started on our Earl of Abergavenny project and creating our new archive. So Ed's original archive was entitled Trilogy, and it's a, a wealthy archive, if you will. So it consists of uh, an inventory and a catalogue of the individual finds. It can, those, uh, those finds were categorised by material and use. There are narratives that were written at the time. Ed commissioned papers on particular types of vines. So, for example, he commissioned uh, Dr. Philip Armitage down at Exeter University to produce an osteological analysis of the human and animal bones that were recovered from the shipwreck. And there's also papers that were written on particular pottery types. Uh, as you can see, there's crew and passenger lists. And there's also, uh, Ed wrote papers on the wider context, such as the British East India Company and the Wordsworths too. So as I said, it's a rich archive with kind of uh, focused uh, material on the finds and then wider contextual stuff as well. So the format was in, uh, the, the, the archive was in three different formats, the, uh, in an ebook. Uh, a CD and a PDF. And each of those formats contains greater and lesser amounts of information, and there are also a greater and lesser levels of accessibility as well. So the ebook contains the most amount of information, but sadly uh, that's becoming less and less accessible. We suspect that the, um, the software developers aren't using updates anymore for the ebooks. So we've had to use an old lap laptop and an old version of Windows to be able to access that. Really frustrating and a few nightmares, as you can imagine. But yeah, that's the ebook. Secondly, there's a CD which contains slightly less information. And as we know, CDs are being used um, a lot less now. It was greatly accessible kind of 10 years ago, but has become less so as time's gone on. The most accessible format is the PDF because that's available on the NAS website in three sections. So it's very accessible, but unfortunately it doesn't have the uh, the collection inventory and catalog that's on the ebook. So yeah, you can get a good idea of the nightmares we've had with these formats. Okay, so the primary goal of our 
Earl of Abergavenny project is to develop digital skills amongst the volunteers in the heritage sector. We have this amazing group of volunteers that have so invested the collection and they not only want to work with it, but they live to share that collection with other individuals and parties. So that's, that's our primary remit. Second, second to that, we want to increase accessibility and engagement with the collection, uh, with the Earl of Abergavenny collection, and also with maritime heritage in general, and with Portman Museum. And lastly, we want to uh, share the techniques that we've developed for recording uh, the collection with other heritage organisations and museums. Oh, here's one of our little uh, video of one of our 3D models. Let me stand back so you can see it. So here's one of the ways in which we are sharing our learning points and skills with other heritage organisations. So with our partners, the NAS and MSDS Marine, we've produced this volunteer training manual in the three key digital skills that we've trained our volunteers in to record the Avergaveni collection. And I'll go into those three key digital skills shortly. Um, I should say that this manual is free to view and download. I'll supply a QR code at the end of this presentation. And I've got hard copies with me on my table over there if anyone would like to take one on afterwards. So the three key digital skills. Firstly, we need to know where our stuff is since it's come into the museum. So our collections management system is modes. So half a dozen volunteers have had training from modes in how to uh, record the collection to that collection management system. So that's been, yes, yeah, applied by modes, online training, and so we now have volunteers that are able to look at the object entry form from when the collection items have come in and transfer that digitally onto modes. And in a simple way, it means when someone says to me in the museum or emails me, can I see such and such? I can go, yeah, I can look at the ID number, I can find it, it's got its place, it's amazing. So secondly, MSDS Marine have come into the museum on four or five occasions, taken small groups of volunteers in how to make 3D digital models of the collections items. And to date, we've got just under 200 items modeled and up on Sketchfab. So the, the volunteers are using an iPad and an app called Polycam to model some of the objects in the collection. And then we have another volunteer, lovely Paul here, that comes in on a Friday and he uploads the model from Polycam app onto Sketchfab. And for people that are digitally engaged, of course, it means it's accessible, it's viewable to a global, global audience, which is an amazing thing. Lastly, condition assessing and recording. So Peter Knott from NAS and one of our own trustees, uh, Nancy Grace from the National Trust, who's been an archeologist for around 35 years, have trained our volunteers in condition assessing and recording. So you can see Nick here has a group of objects in front of him. He fills an electronic form, assessing and recording the condition of those objects. That electronic form is then uploaded to modes and becomes part of the object record. So those are our three key digital recording skills. Here's an example of our Sketchfab site. So you can see a little video of one of the 3D objects there. This is a template that we've developed by looking at other museums that have 3D models online. So every object has the same template and then underneath there's an interpretation plaque that's written by one of our volunteers that comes in on a Friday. And there you can see our, you can see our list there of collection items. Yeah, so to finish with, on your left, you'll see a QR code on the back of one of our cards that'll take you directly to Portman Museum's website and our Earl of Abergavenny section. That'll give you information about the history of the Earl of Abergavenny project, as well as the, uh, the history, the story of the ship and the shipwreck. On the right, you'll see another QR code that will take you directly to the site where our volunteer training manual is being held. And as I said, it's free to download and I've also got some hard copies with me. Thanks for listening.